Oh, yeah, it's an incredible piece of theatre. Absolutely unbelievable. It was brilliant. It's very emotional. It's, really, it's the first time I've ever been to Peter and I'll we'll come back. I'm very angry. I feel very angry about it. My self-esteem's gone right up because this is really important, you know. I feel like this has just been ongoing therapy for me. Three years ago, one of the hits of The Fringe was Glad. The director, Jeremy Weller, took a number of homeless men and put them on the stage to tell their story. Last year, he repeated the experience with Bad, this time using Young Offenders. This year at The Hat Trick and the next rhyming title, Mad. The harrowing story of 12 people and their collision with men. Everyone who comes to see the show should have a, a personal therapist appointed with their ticket. OK, can you come back? Put this fucking bit in your fucking hand! Okay. You know, this whole thing of madness, it's like, it's the way people cope with um, the bad things that happen in their life, you know? I've been hiding behind things all my life, right? I've been abused. I've allowed myself to be abused. I've been starving myself to death for years. Frightened of men, frightened of sex, and do you know how much I hate myself? Many of them, not all of them, want to say something about their own experiences because they think there's lots of people in rooms, probably in Edinburgh, who are completely isolated. And they're completely isolated because people like you and I say, oh, that person, I can't handle what they are. What they are doesn't fit into what I know, therefore I must, I've got to stay away from them, like plague victims. Three months ago, Jeremy Weller set out to find a group of women who could bring their own experiences of mental illness to the festival. There wasn't a script. The play would grow out of their stories. The only thing that was certain was that the auditions and rehearsals in the weeks ahead would be the basis for the play. Now, some of your experiences are quite extraordinary, I can imagine. And some of your experiences are extra, just simple, everyday experiences, but all of them have contributed in some way. So first of all, what I'd like to do is to go around this group and to ask you one at a time why you came here, first of all, and what do you expect to find? One of the reasons I came along, um, as, as I said to Jeremy, I think I'd get a lot out of this, you know, because when I took my breakdown, it just I mean, it shocked me so much. The reason why I'm here is because um, I've had there's been a lot of mental illness in my family. I was surprised to learn that having spent two months in the Andrew Duncan Clinic and about 18 months in psychotherapy sort of would, have, would be an asset in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not after acting, I'm after something that is near to something you've been to, through or something you know about, but something quite truthful. OK, so do I have to point at someone or is someone just going to have a go? These people are frightening me, for goodness sake. Aye, and come on. Calm down. There's phones ringing and everything, you know, and my mum's on the phone and they're saying it's not for me and I know it is, you know. It's really difficult to go through the rehearsals and keep on the track. I find it very difficult to concentrate on my train of thought of what I'm looking for. Stop it! Oh, yes, hey, there's four weeks to go, and it's difficult to imagine what's going on here could be turned into a play in the conventional sense. Everyone's very emotionally drained, and the lines between reality and stage play are very blurred. Number two, this is Naomi. Right, I could easily say to you, I could say, Naomi, you know, so what? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not moved. I mean, so you had a, you had a breakdown, but this hasn't had any effect on me. Right. How do you convince people of what it was like? How do you pass on that kind of experience? Is it like you're out of gear? Yeah, it's just like you're not connected with your body anymore, you know? It's, it's like you have, yeah, you have sort of forgotten everything. I think my thing started off, um, you know, when I was eight years old, my, my brother died. And um, I just, it just really affected me. I became a very introverted person. I did not cope with it very well. I did not express um, my grief. And I want people to sort of read my mind and to, to, to see what I'm going through because I can't really express it myself and I feel I have no right to express it. I feel very isolated, very lonely. You know, 
my journey of life was to just see how much I could be hurt. I knew that if I really drank, I'd be so close to wanting to sort of kill myself. I took drugs, you know, and it's, it's like, I almost wanted to end it. So in the scene today... I'm not scripting, I'm saying you do it. Mm. You make of it what you will. Mm. But all I'm after is for you to make it, bring it on the outside, what you were actually going through, and to make these people you're doing it to understand. Mm. Can I have people around me? Just more, in a circle. You know, at the time, it's very frightening to go through a breakdown. So all I could do is just, just try and create some sort of feelings that I felt. Oh, I can do better than that. You usually do. Come on. Like you normally do. A bit more. And I'm being very calm about it at the moment, you know? I'm just being incredibly calm. But all I know is that I hate every fucking bastard in this room, right? Especially you, I really fucking hate you. Get on your knees. I got a bit confused at one point whether it was an impro or whether it was real, basically. I wasn't sure whether we were meant to be our, ourselves in an audition who would react to Naomi as a person or whether we were just meant to be dummies. As soon as we've invited you over, if you, if you have any doubt, you go up to the person and you say, you know, that wasn't, you know, me or you, you know, that's the improvisation. And it's like washed away straight away and it's a very supportive group. <laughs> very frustrated in it because uh, it didn't go how I wanted to, you know. Um, I think I can dig much deeper, you know, and I want to as well. I think it can all get a lot sort of darker and blacker and, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot more to get out, really. I just want my babies back, you know. That's all I want. You know, dear God, you know, I made a stupid, stupid mistake. I was just a child myself. I was just wanting attention. It was my way of getting attention. And I'm so fucking ashamed of myself. I want my babies back. That's all I want. I want my fucking babies back. And I can't say anything to my mum and dad. They lost Mark and I fucking murdered two babies. Feel that you need a certain expertise to cope with this. Could it get totally out of hand? On one hand, yes, it could get out of hand. But on the other, everyone's reaction to date because of going through the rehearsals and what's happened during the rehearsals is very positive. And they say that they feel better, not worse, because of it. But still, there's this reality overlap. You know, when does the real thing begin and when does the, the fake end? It's just the stage group. I'm out to. When Jeremy told me that it would be quite traumatic at times, and that was an understatement. It was an understatement. Right. Oh, very effective, Naomi. Very effective. Oh, sorry. I feel as if I'm cheating them because I've, because I'm older, because I've been through quite a lot of trauma in my life, sort of grief, misery, illness, and I've licked it, and I've sort of built my wall, you know, it's quite safe behind that wall. And it works for me. 
and I'm not coming out, you know. But I think in the space of the next few weeks, I'm going to have to. It's two weeks to opening night, and rehearsals are still intense, emotional, and unpredictable. But at least now, everyone's aware of the role that they will play. What's not clear is how they will play it. And that's what Jeremy wants. From yesterday, you saw a rough outline, didn't you? Well, now I'm saying, well, let's, let's start again, now that you know that. I felt up until, I must say, about yesterday, it was going quite well for me. But it just shows you that as time goes on, like five weeks into it, there's now this acting stuff coming in for me, which I want to get away from, because that's, I mean, I'm not an actress at all. <clears throat> And I've always come along to um, just to give my own personal experiences and what I've experienced in mental health. How uh, you've been in rehearsals for most of the day. What are your observations? Well, it's even at this stage a very moving, very powerful experience because it's a group of intelligent, articulate, commanding, I would say, young women telling their story. And the only thing that worries me now is that I feel they're doing this in a sense for my entertainment, and it seems to me the cost to them is high. It all seems so very real to me. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that, Jeremy? Well, that's because it is quite real. But they're willing to take that on board, and that's their decision, that they want to make it as real as possible, because they not only want to tell the story of the play, they want to tell the story of their lives in the context of the play. <laughs> I remember thinking, in a space of three weeks, I've lost, like, my husband, and I've lost my house, and now I've lost my job. So, I mean, if that's not hitting rock bottom, do you know what I mean? I don't know what is. It's just like, in that short space of time, everything that I ever wanted was away. <laughs> Why can I not do this? the most fucking simple thing in the world! The painful thing for me was that nobody would understand. Nobody would understand what was going on. God, just help me. Just help me a wee bit. Just a wee. That's all I'm asking. That much. Just a wee, wee, wee. Just, just that. Just, just that. That's all I'm asking of you. God, if you can, will you let me die? I feel that I'm getting a much stronger person, and it's a great way. I mean, I can't think of a better opportunity than uh, to deal with the issues I've come through, you know, than actually to get up there and act them out. Well, this is it. The improvisation and the rehearsals are over. The 12 actors are ready or not. For some of them, it'll be the first time they've faced an audience. Whether the paying customers will see a series of real-life emotional episodes or a coherent piece of drama, we'll soon know. <laughs> Get her, everyone. No, you just don't understand my life with Peter, do you? No, no, no one here does. I mean, Peter used to express his love to me by beating me up, OK? He used to put me in a cupboard. Do you understand what I'm saying? A cupboard because he didn't want anyone to see me. Peter, okay. he beat me black and blue, but I really believe that he loved me because, I guess, because every time he hit me, I thought, he must love me, you know? I originally started with Jonathan trying to be violent towards me. He used to smile when he did it, because he had a lot of charisma, you know? <laughs> I just didn't feel anything, you know? So um, I told Jeremy this, and he just said, oh, well, why don't you try reversing it? Because you were there, you know what it felt like, and I think and that's what I'm doing, taking out the abuse that I had onto Jonathan. OK. Through the teeth, over the gums. Watch out, you chump! Fucking bastard!
I know it was a hundred times worse than that, right, and I know I'm not capable of giving that violence out. Some of those girls are just um, so brave, you know, it's just, it's just a raw courage that's out there. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, there are no pills and there's no therapy you can get rid of your pain or your sense of loss. Get rid of your shit somewhere else. I must admit, I came into the, the improvisations with a certain amount of cynicism and and whatever, you know, I thought, well, whatever they want, I'll go along with. And then day by day, it sort of really got to me. You've none of you seen it. In the army, I saw a real madness, right? Cool, rational madness. Organised, institutionalised madness. You take a young man, you put him in the army. Nice young men, nice young men, good men from good homes, right? And you train them, and you put them to some asshole of the world. And I blotted that out in a fit of pique. And the minute I had said it, I thought, oh, no, this is wrong, I shouldn't have said that. You catch a terrorist. What is a terrorist when somebody tell me what that is? So you catch him, and you throw him in the back of the truck, and you fucking tie him, and you kick him, and you beat him, and you kick him, and you're burning, and you get fed up with that. So what do you do? You pull a pin out of a grenade, stuff it down his fucking trousers, and kick him out of the truck, and watch him disintegrate. That's funny. That's funny. It must have been funny. We laughed. I went through quite a bad time within myself about what I was actually saying. Well, we only got to read the papers, even today, and uh, what's going on in Yugoslavia. And what the airplane thing is the tip of the iceberg. I felt as if I was uh, betraying a lot of people. But um, having made the choice to go into the army, I still had no right to have that kind of stuff laid on me, and I think I have now have every right to get rid of it. Okay, can you come back, please, quickly? Take your. No, I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Okay. If I'm going to tell the truth in this theatre, so are you. I felt a really inarticulate response to it because there was just so much that was so intensely sort of down your stomach. It was almost as if it was just a sort of stream of consciousness that they were almost making it up as they went along from the experiences that they had had. I can't imagine anybody sitting through that and not feeling that uh, some part of them resonates with the experience that's going on in front of them. By seeing now much of it for the second time, one sees how very highly skilled it is and that I feel very much, as Caroline says at the end, you have to take a nervous breakdown to understand. And in a sense, vicariously, we're doing that. I thought it was very exploitative of the audience in particular. And I, I felt that, um, I, I think theater's a place for healing and, and troubles to be changed in some way. And I didn't like seeing a curtain call with people in as much distress as they were during the performance. In seeing somebody else's psychology, that is part of ours, and that is part of the human condition, I think, sharing experiences, sharing understanding, and sharing pain. And I think we may find that difficult, but we should do it, and we can do it. Well, it was very, very true to life. That's just what happens. Yeah, yeah it just, you, I just thought that's what happens. The only thing is we couldn't understand at the time why it happened. I don't think it's actually transformative. I think it's, it's a release that, that has nothing more to say than a disclosure of that pain. So I feel like a voyeur, and I feel, I feel abused watching it without having anything to contribute to it. What do you have on the stage is honesty, and if that affronts people and offends people, well, that's tough.